Yeah, so yesterday, James Charles went off on some Jaclyn Hill haters. So in this video, I wanna help all of you get inside James Charles' mind to understand a little bit of what he's going through as well as how he's growing as a person. And I think it's some things that we can all take away from this. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, what I try to do is take different topics going on in the YouTube community. And I often try to take a look at the situations from different angles that I don't see other drama channels or commentary channels or news channels like really taking a look at. So if you're into that stuff, if you want something different, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And be sure to follow me over on Instagram and Twitter at The Rewired Soul soul. All right. And with every video, we donate 20% to a good cause. So this video, 20% of all of the ad revenue will be donated to NAMI. All right. NAMI is the National Alliance on Mental Illness. It is a fantastic organization. So I will also link a, a direct donation down in the description and in the pinned comment below. All right. So yeah, last night I was on Twitter and I'm like, you go, James Charles, you go. All right. And I wanna, I wanna help you guys understand a little bit of what he's going through, all right? So anyways, it all started with this, where some account, somebody made an account called Face Jacklins, and it says, the epitome of class and grace, going to the grocery store in her slippers and pajamas, then posing in a grocery cart. We call this trash in civilized society. Hashtag Jacqueline Hill. No one feels sorry for you or thinks this is cute. And James Charles retweets it and says, y'all are so effing weird. An account and thread of people literally dedicated to hating Jacqueline Hill, the beauty community, continues to prove that it's ironically the absolute ugliest place on social media. He goes on to say, I truly cannot imagine what it would be like to have nothing more important to do with my day than to sit online and leave negative comments about someone that I've never met. How scary. Somebody said to James Charles, I understand James, you are trying to stick up for her and anyone, but you're just getting better and out of drama. Please don't fight this battle for her because I don't want more people attacking you too. I don't agree with people bullying her, but please don't do this. James Charles says, appreciate you looking out for me, but people make videos about me and attacking me when I breathe. I'd rather get attacked for standing up for what's right. And it says, be kind to one another. It's not that hard. You go James Charles, all right? So first thing I wanna ask you is going back to this, like what are, you, what are your thoughts, okay? And I, I think a lot of us, like I want you to start paying attention to when your mind says, oh, well, they deserve it. They deserve this. These people deserve bullying, right? It's interesting how our, how our minds justify who we feel should be punished and offensively attacked, all right? But I want you to ask yourself, like, do you think that it's right? Like, what kind of person do you think creates an account dedicating to talking trash about someone they've never met? What type of person do you think that is? Like, when I go through hate comments, something that's helped me just kind of keep my head on straight is I sit there and I imagine, what type of person would do this? right? I'm sure James Charles and many other YouTube creators do this, right? Sometimes I see the same person, the three or four hate comments on one single video. And I sit there, I'm like, what type of person is this? I ask myself, is this a happy person or is this a miserable person? All right. So we're about to dive in and try to get inside the mind of James Charles. And I can definitely relate because those of you who didn't know earlier this year, I was canceled, had hundreds of thousands of complete strangers telling me who I am, what my true motives are, my intentions, and trying to tell me that I'm an awful person, which led to me taking, you know, uh, a little bit of a YouTube break, which led to me writing a book about my experience, which led to me doing hours and hours more of therapy, focusing on this topic with even more going to 12 step meetings, talking to people and trying to get this. And if you look in the comments, you'll notice people who still hate me and they'll say, why do you make everything about yourself? 
Well, from what I've learned from my 12 step background is one of the best ways to help empathize with others is to understand how it relates to you, right? And that's something that I wanna do. I want people to kind of understand what James Charles might be going through. And here's the thing, what I went through was a fraction of what James Charles went through earlier this year. But I am absolutely loving this change in James Charles. Like I cannot tell you how happy this makes me. So in my book, Canceled, I start out, in the very introduction, I talk about how people want you to just quit talking about it, how they, you, they, they want you to just let it go, quit bringing it back up and everything. And I argue in my book, this is why nothing changes. Nothing changes because nobody wants to talk about it. We wanna leave it in the past and just forget about it and everything like that. The reality is, like the bell can't be unrung. This happened. This happened to James Charles. This happened to me. And James Charles, just a month or two ago, um, Keemstar tweeted out at him like, wanting to do an interview and follow up about you know, how James Charles has been since the whole fiasco happened with Tati Westbrook and Jeffree Star and everything like that. And James Charles said like, I just wanna leave it in the past, I just wanna move on. And I'm like, that's a bummer, but I respect his decision. Like, I know of so many people who have had the internet hate mob come after them and they just don't wanna talk about it. They just wanna move past it. But let me tell you this, like, do you think, do you think when I first got clean and sober seven years, I wanted to run around sharing my story about how I messed up my life with drugs and alcohol, how I put drugs and alcohol ahead of everybody, not only my friends and family members, but my own son? Do you think I wanted to share that story? Hell no, I didn't. But do you know why I started sharing that story? Was to help other people people, all right? So I respected that James Charles didn't want to share his story. I respected other people who don't want to share their story and what they went through, right? But I got to a point where I'm like, I need to talk about this. And that's what I see with James Charles. I see with James Charles when he replies to this young woman and says, I appreciate you looking out for me, but people make videos about me and attack me when I breathe. I'd rather get attacked for standing up for what's right damn straight like that is truly gangster and i am so proud of james charles like because he has obviously so much more influence than i do you know what i mean but like think about it think about james charles standing up for jacqueline hill like here's my question to everybody who has this hatred towards jacqueline hill like this is what blows my mind too like so many people who don't know me think i'm this like angry, like hateful person and I'm just trying to get people and stuff. But I look at all the random people on the internet attacking Jacqueline Hill. Like I fancy myself a man of logic and I've been reading so many books trying to understand how people can be so irrational. Like anybody who still has like just ill will for Jacqueline Hill because of the whole lipstick fiasco and everything, I want you to sit back and ask yourself, do you truly believe that Jacqueline Hill did this in a malicious way. Do you think she was sitting there in some big office, like on a throne, like, <laughs> I'm gonna have fibers and everything on my lipstick. This is gonna be great, and I'm gonna do what I can to hide it. <laughs> right? Like, Hanlon's razor teaches us, like, don't attribute to malice, which could easily be attributed to stupidity or ignorance. A lot of people make mistakes. And the way that I see people hate on others for making those mistakes is mind blowing. And going back to James Charles, like the people, like if you don't like James Charles because he seems cocky, right? Or because he seems like, you know, whatever it is about his personality, that's cool. Like I'll let you guys in on a secret. You don't have to like everybody, all right? We don't all click with one another. You know what I mean? But like James Charles, a lot of that whole insanity that happened with him was because of his messy 20 year old dating life, right? Like I just want you to imagine and nobody out in the audience ever has to imagine having their entire dating history put on blast and every intimate relationship they've had just put out there. That is the beauty of being part of the hate mob is the anonymity. Nobody's gonna look right at you and say, okay, now it's your turn. 
Now it's your turn to share and let's see how morally superior you are to the person that you're judging. Nobody's ever gonna do that to you. You feel nice and safe and cozy in there. You know what I mean? So I hope my channel reaches people who don't think that this world should be about attacking people. Like if you wanna criticize, go for it. But if you're this person, who has an account dedicated to hating on Jaclyn Hill, like get therapy, right? Like I don't even have my Twitter notifications turned on and when I sometimes see the hateful tweet responses I get, I go through that person's Twitter history, I'm like, you are a miserable human being. Like how can someone be so miserable? Like I want you to ask yourself, do you wanna look back on your life and think about the minutes the days, the years that you wasted being angry online, is that something that you wanna lie on your deathbed as an 80 year old thinking about? Like what could that time have been better spent doing? Spending time with your friends, spending time with your family, making human connections. Like learn to let stuff go. Not everybody out there is an evil person trying to screw you over. The last thing that I wanna talk about is like you can tell that James Charles is fed up with the beauty community and that is very hard. James Charles is in the beauty community and he's fed up with it. He's disgusted with it. He talks about how ironically it's the absolute ugliest place. I, I can somewhat relate to James Charles because I guarantee there is this internal struggle going on with him. Because here's my experience. I dedicated my life a couple years into my sobriety into helping people overcome addiction, to helping people with their mental health. And I, I finally found felt like I found meaning and purpose in life after 30 years of not knowing who I am and why I'm on this planet. I felt like I had, I found this meaning and it, it felt like pretty good meaning trying to help people. And then watching my own community just cannibalize me and assume the worst in me, right? And spread hate about me and make hate videos about me. Like I want absolutely nothing to do with the mental health community here on YouTube. The saddest part and like, I'm doing my best to figure out a way to openly talk about this, but like the saddest part is like, this whole experience has changed what I wanna do with my life and it's been a very hard journey to refigure this thing out. Like I am still going through therapy and things like that because I've lost like this motivation to help people. And even just saying that out loud, and this is the first time I've said this in a freaking video, but like it breaks my heart. It breaks my heart. Like it, I, I never, I never imagined that I've, I'd be that person who doesn't even want to help anymore. I just wanna make videos and share my opinions. I imagine it's like a teacher who goes in, you know, just all excited to teach kids and just, eventually something happens and they just, it shifts. And like, when I think about that, it, it truly makes me sad and I wanna get out of that place. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's just crazy, but like, when you have hundreds of thousands of strangers who you're trying to help turn on you and just start saying crazy things about you and telling you what your motives are, like it's really hard to bounce back from that. Like, and it's crazy too, because I worked at a drug and alcohol treatment center for three years. I've worked with thousands of clients. I've had people come up to me, tell me to go F myself and screw off and everything like that. It didn't phase me one bit, but somehow, somehow the YouTube community managed to break a part of, uh, of my spirit. Now I'll end with this, don't get me wrong, there are plenty of people out there who are helping, and this is why I appreciate you guys too. God, I could have made a whole video about this. This is why I appreciate you guys too. Like those of you who message me and thank me and tell me how much I've helped you and encouraged you to go to therapy, or some of you who have 
told me that you went to treatment because of something I said in a video, like you guys are ha helping me get back on the path to wanting to help people. Because right now I'm just kind of in this place where like I still love educating people, but that that helping fa uh, factor, that, that kind of like selfless helping that I was doing, making a bunch of videos, just trying to help people improve their mental health, like, that, that's a part of me that I'm still trying to heal and it's been six months. So I, I hope this helps you understand James Charles a little bit more and what he's going through. But me personally, as someone who's had a bunch of strangers come at me sideways and how I've made it part of my mission to stand up for others, like seeing James Charles make this shift and watching him learn and grow in this, you know, it, it inspires me. You know what I mean? But anyways, again, let me know your thoughts. Let me know your thoughts on people who who treat influencers like Jaclyn Hill, like, like you would think that Jaclyn Hill like just made her rounds to people's houses and just started punching them in the faces and kicking their dogs and stuff. Like, why do we get so attached to the most trivial, stupid things? Did she mess up? Yes. Did she lose a ton of money because she messed up? Yes. Like, what else do you want? You know what I mean? Uh, but anyways, I am rambling now. I thought this video was gonna be 10 minutes. Woo hoo, went over that a little bit. But anyways, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want a channel that is different than the other channels you're watching on YouTube, make sure you subscribe, ring that notification bell, and tell a friend. Tell a friend, say, yo, I found this guy, Chris, the Rewired Soul, and his channel's different. Go tell your friend that, tell your mom that, maybe your dad. Maybe your cousin, I don't know, your friends, family members, coworkers, right? So right now, if you're at work and somebody's asking you like, hey, what are you, what are you smiling about? Say, I'm listening to this dude, Chris, just yap away. All right, <laughs> but anyways, I wanna send out a huge thank you to everybody who supports the channel over on Patreon. You're all amazing, as well as everybody who helps support what I do here by buying you know, my mental health books that I've written, uh, that buys merch and everything like that. You're all awesome. Thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking with me. Thanks for understanding that I'm human, and I'll see you next time.